I'm Scott Allen Miller, and this is my daily life living in Nicaragua. Today, I want to talk about what it means to be middle class here in Nicaragua. How can you define it? What does it mean? And I'm taking a walk through one of my favorite upper middle class neighborhoods in the city of Leon. This is the Reparto and the Residencia of Veracruz. So we're going to take a walk. I'm going to take you guys along with me. Let's dig into what this means right after the bump. There's always a number of houses that are for sale up here, and I try to show them to you guys when they do come up. This is one that I've not seen previously for sale. I've certainly seen the house previously. This is right in the residency of uh, Los Altos de Veracruz. So this is inside the gated community. The gates are not often manned, so uh, if you're looking for a place that's always locked up and, and guarded, this is not necessarily it, at least at this time. Not an area that you need. It's an extremely safe area, but this house, I just wanted to show and give you guys an idea of something that's just become available and by just within the last several months I would say certainly one of the smaller houses here but this is in an excellent neighborhood absolutely excellent on the west side of the city all right on today's show I, we got to start right middle class is a difficult thing to define let's start by talking about what it means in the United States to give people some context if you're not from the US I'm sorry if this context isn't the best one for you so there's a couple ways that we tend to define uh, middle class in the U.S. One is by job type. Below middle class is generally considering the working class, although this is eroding as a concept simply because a lot of jobs that we often attribute to the working class, like being a plumber or electrician, often pays really, really well and will often propel you to the top of the middle class instead of uh, being in the working class. So it can be quite misleading. A lot of people who are doing uh, manual labor these days or technical but physical labor uh, can do extremely well. And that was not traditional, say 50 years ago. So some of those things are changing. They make for rough definitions, but more unskilled manual labor is going to be generally the working class. Middle class is generally considered to be jobs like office jobs or professional jobs, semi-professional, depending on where you are. So those are rough definitions. From an income perspective, the U.S. generally measures the middle class as starting at $47,000 per year income and going up to $141,000. Uh, that's a really big range, but the middle class is supposed to be a really big range, so that more or less makes sense. But just again, as a reminder, hola, we are walking through, that is the sorbets of Leon, if you're looking for a sorbet on the street. Uh, we are walking through Los Altos de Veracruz, absolutely amazing middle class neighborhood here in in Leon, Nicaragua, in Sutiava. So, so that income gives you an idea of what that range is like. And for most people who live in the United States and or Canada, that's enough to have a pretty good understanding of what that income is going to mean. From a description standpoint, we often say that those in the middle class are those who have the option, that doesn't mean they're gonna do it, but they are within the range of being able to own their own house, own their own car, uh, take family vacations. Um, I think those are the main things, right? Like, obviously, there's little things that go along with that. Those are the main indicators. Are you able to actually own your house if you feel that that's a good idea? By the way, this house, these areas used to be open, and it let a lot more air and light in, and I guess they wanted more privacy. I think that's unfortunate. It looked so nice before. Uh, so it gives you kind of an idea, right? Are you able to go take vacations? Are you able to do those things? Now, it's important. That's the American context. If we were to translate this to Nicaragua, some things have to change. Ideas like homeownership, that makes sense. That's more or less a similar thing. Car ownership, cars are dramatically more expensive uh, as a... Uh, factor of income here in Nicaragua. They're actually more expensive. Say a car that costs 20000 in the U.S. may cost twenty one, twenty two thousand here. That's not super dramatic, but it is more, right? And when you have a lower earning rate, that is a big factor. So car ownership is much less of a thing just in general. It's also much less needed here in Nicaragua. So you're much less likely to use that as an indicator for middle class. It's much more of an upper middle class, upper class indicator uh, in a different way than it is in the U.S. But in the U.S., quite often you're getting a car so you can go to your job and hear that is not common at all. Look at his little puppy that I got following me. Oh, he's nervous. You're like being a guard dog, but you're nervous. All right. Family vacations, another one that's very different. In the U.S., uh, there's this internal to the U.S., the incomes are very high uh, compared to much of the rest of the world. 
So taking international vacations is something that is generally extremely affordable to Americans because in many times when you go internationally, you take a vacation, you're actually going to spend less than you would at home. Or at least there's a huge offset due to the lower cost of, of being somewhere other than the, the high cost place where you have a job in many, many cases. Uh, as we're walking by here, I just want to spin around. I've shown this, but it's gotten so overgrown, it might as well be a completely different place. Last time I showed this lot behind me, this would be an amazing spot to put a house, by the way, or two houses maybe, but one really nice house. This corner was just a wall, then they took down the wall, they cut it down, and now it's a jungle. But you're in the middle of, of the residencia. It's a funny little spot. Some of these places, we've had so much rain. A lot of these places are like jungles that normally are just grassy lots. No one wants to cut them down right now. Uh, so, uh, so Americans tend to see um, going out to dinner, right? You're gonna take the family and you're gonna go to Red Lobster and you're gonna have a nice dinner. That could be relatively expensive. That'd be a, a big expenditure. And so Americans have a tendency to avoid that. You wanna go out and have a whole bunch of drinks out at a nice club probably pretty expensive. You might want to avoid that. But if you're in Nicaragua, the ability to go internationally for a holiday, extremely expensive because life is cheap at home. And when you travel, let's say to the US, uh, a Nicaraguan going to the US uh, will, will have a ratio of only earning in raw numbers about 10%. That's probably a little bit more than that, but it's really low. And so, and so the cost of everything in the US is extremely high. So it takes a lot of earning potential in Nicaragua to go to the US and go on vacation. But an American coming to Nicaragua would find that it's so cheap, everything is so much less expensive than it is at home, that they can actually go on vacation to Nicaragua and save money. So in one case, it's a huge expenditure, and in the other, it's a big savings. So we don't want to use international vacations as an indicator of middle class very well because they are so different between the countries. So the way that I would look at it, and this is very subjective, but we have to be when we're talking about this type of topic, is that uh, in the United States, being able to take vacations is a great indicator of middle class or a suggestive and in Nicaragua, it is the ability to go out to restaurants and do things out and about, like going out to live music and going out and getting a beer with friends and being able to hang out on a regular basis and traveling around the country. Not that the indicator in the U.S. doesn't suggest that traveling around the U.S. isn't an option, too, but Americans have these low-cost vacation options that many other people do not. So that's important to, to factor in when using these things as indicators. So... Something that in the U.S. would be relatively common, and I know people who are, you know, entry-level middle class, don't own their own house, work as a server in a restaurant, relatively young, and they take vacations, but they're able to take vacations on a regular basis because they're going internationally. They're going to places like Mexico and spending less than they do when they're at home, and that makes their vacations much more affordable. They also have really, really, really cheap flights that are direct from the city that they live in, whereas Nicaraguans almost always have expensive flights that are non-direct. All these things add up, but Nicaraguans are very likely to live in the city and be able to easily head out and go to the beach, go to the mountains, go to the canyons, go to another city on weekends if they're middle class. No problem, because internal public Public transportation is super cheap and those other locations are no more expensive than their home was. So you have to adjust for the way that the different economies interact with themselves to come up with a good comparison. Woo, that was a lot of context. I hope that's enough to help you guys understand how we're going to look at Nicaraguan middle class because I think this is a really interesting topic. All right, so given all that, what is minimum wage? In the United States, minimum wage is different throughout the country, so we can't give a solid number, but we're gonna say that the current minimum wage is around about $10. In a lot of areas, it can be as much as double that, but 10 is a pretty working number. $10 per hour. Here in Nicaragua, minimum wage is right about $1 per hour. Technically, it's under that, uh, but that's because people work so many hours but it's really, really close. It's also important in the United States, if we're normally comparing monthly salaries, which we don't normally do in the US, we talk annual salaries. And in Latin America, we always talk lunar monthly salaries. That is one thirteenth of your annual salary. So when we say someone makes $1,000 a month, we don't mean that they make 12,000 a year, we mean they make $13,000 a year. Got it? Little bit confusing, you get used to it, and uh, just part of 
everything you do in Latin America. You ever talk to anyone from Latin America, you ask them how much they make, they will give you just one number. That is how much they make per month, but it's lunar month, 13 times a year, but it's every four weeks, not four and a half-ish, depending on which month. That gets confusing. Okay, so they also tend to work a little bit longer hours, hence the slightly lower amount per hour. So if you're trying to calculate that out, the numbers don't seem to work out. It's the mixture of the 13 and the 48-hour weeks and the six... The, Anyway, we're gonna work with the best numbers we can get. So, basically, what you find is that minimum wage in Nicaragua comes out to about $200 per month, lunar month, of course. Uh, we do find some places, like if you're working in the Zona Franca or you are a teacher, you may be below minimum wage. Last time I worked with a teacher, their income was about 164, but the minimum has gone up since then, so it's probably closer to 178, 180. But that's a teacher, that is a senior teacher teaching a highly uh, sought after uh, school subject, still only making about $180 per month. That's USD. We're going to talk everything in USD. So that is very, very low. And that is about the same as you would make as being a maid in a house or something like that. These are, these are entry level points, and hence, hence the term minimum wage. Living in the working classes is roughly between that entry point. Obviously, anything at that point or lower is definitely abject poverty. And even at that point, people are very much struggling. But because of cultural differences between Nicaragua and the U.S., people at that point often do survive. If you're single, obviously, that is a per person income, not a family income. If you uh, it generally, if you're in those ranges, you're expected to be living at home, either your parents home or in a shared home with other people. And uh and often paying little to no rent. And while that is a terrible number, very, very hard, it is possible to survive on that number, and people do all the time. Generally, you're gonna have... Hi, hi, oh, this one's... Hi, 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 yes. That one's always a little bit vicious, you gotta watch him. This is a lot for sale right over here. It is a beautiful spot. The dog would get to know you. Seriously, he's not like a problem. To me, or to, to him, I'm a stranger who pops up sometimes and suddenly is in front of his house. If you lived here, don't be worried about the dog. And really, he's a sweetie. He's just protecting his family. But this lot right here is for sale. This is on the upper road here in the in the uh, Los Altos. It is a beautiful spot. Absolutely fantastic. Lots, you can see the great trees that are over me. Hopefully you can see them. Look at this. Great, great wooded area. Beautiful neighborhood. Uh, it takes a long time for houses to get added to the neighborhood, but when they do, they are fantastic. Lovely place. Okay. So, so working class generally is between about uh, 200 a month and about 800 a month. We use 800 a month as a very rough, very, very, very rough entry point into middle class. This is the indicator that we often use of have you entered the middle class, that single person income of about $800 per month. And from observations here, now of course you can live in more expensive areas where that would not work and you can be in cheaper areas where that would kind of work better, but that's pretty universal. The prices don't vary that much unless you're in Granada or San Juan del Sur. And even there, if you're in that type of housing and situations that you would find with that, it's, it's not that far different. It is more the expat housing that has the large variances. So uh, the, one of the ways we can look at that, we know people who make $550 to $600 a month, and that puts them very solidly into working class. They're still very much struggling, but they're able to do things. You can tell that they're way above normal working class numbers. They're on the upper numbers, more like average for the country. But being able to buy a house generally comes at around... $200 a month. You can definitely get cheaper. You can get to $100 a month. But if you want to get a nice house, a, a safe neighborhood, a great area, around about 200, somewhere between 180 and 220, you're looking at being able to potentially get a mortgage on a very, very reasonable, safe, uh, gated community house. Now, not in the neighborhood I'm in here. This is an upper middle class neighborhood, but the, the rates here could be more like in the 300s. You're not you're not talking about insane numbers. Now, some of these really nice places are certainly much more, but uh, many of the smaller places, like the one I showed at the beginning, we would expect to be a much lower, much more affordable rate, and so that is quite possible. Now, when we're... Uh, so if we're looking at someone who has an income and just making it at around 550 to 600, and then you say, well, if they earned enough more to get them up to 800, that would be the difference between that survival rate and being able to pay a mortgage 
on a pretty nice house. So if you're assuming, not fancy, nothing special, but in a gated community with a guard, right? Nice, nice place where you have, you can, you know, take care of the bushes out front and have a sidewalk and hang out with your friends and entertain and all those great things. That's what we're looking at, right? Just a two bedroom starter home, but that's how entry point to middle class would work. That's what we would expect. So if you're making $800 a month, now if you're a family of four, obviously that would be really tough. But if you're just a single person, for sure, or you have just kids who don't really have big expenses, then making 800 means that you have $600 of spending power per month without having to put anything into the mortgage and you have $200 to make the mortgage. That's really good indicator for entry point into middle class. Now we're going to say middle class generally goes up to somewhere at minimum double that. If you go by the U.S. numbers, they go to about three, three and a half times that number for the range of what we would consider middle class. That would mean here in Nicaragua that we'd be looking around twenty-six to twenty-eight hundred dollars per month would be the upper bounds of middle class, meaning extreme high end of middle class. So once you're hitting around three thousand dollars a month you would start to expect that maybe you're talking about upper class families. So uh, that's, a, that's a good indicator. Now, of course, if you're a single person making 800, things are gonna be struggling. This is the same as in the US, right? If you're just making 40K, 40, whatever it is, 47K did I say as an individual, you're doing okay, but you're not super affluent. But if you have a double income at that, two people making numbers close to that, then you're gonna be doing quite well as long as you're sharing expenses, right? Married couples always have those big advantages that shared expenses make make things easy so same thing here if you had a couple who are each making around about a thousand a month right you actually have quite a good degree of affluence uh, at 800 single income right you're able to live okay you're able to go out to eat once in a while but you're mostly eating the street food right the the fritangas the the barbecues on the street the asados, uh, fried chicken. That's the kind of stuff you're going out for and you're cooking some nicer stuff at home from time to time. Mostly you're cooking at home or going to really simple outdoor uh, eating. Um, you're not going anywhere fancy, but you can take public transportation places from time to time. Uh, you still have to work. You don't have a lot of control of your hours in general. These are all averages, uh, but you're able to live in a nice safe neighborhood without significant problems. You're doing okay. Probably not going to own a car, but you probably don't want to. If you start getting like a little bit more, 1,000 per person, you got two people living together, maybe a married couple dating, maybe just friends who are sharing expenses, you suddenly have an income that would allow for easily having an upgraded house, right? Remember at 200, you're able to get into a house. Well, for 300 to 400, you're getting really nice places. You're getting exclusive neighborhoods like this one. You're getting much larger houses. You're talking three, four, five bedroom houses. You're talking swimming pools. That's rare in Nicaragua, but it's possible at that, at that price range. Um, all kinds of great things start to happen when you have that much money to spend. I am gonna spin the camera around. We showed this house a long time ago. This one, to the best of my knowledge, is for sale. Uh, it's not the greatest house, but it's like a three bedroom with an awful lot of space in an area surrounded by a lot of green. Now, maybe it has, I think it's for sale sign is actually laying down. I think it blew off. So I'm pretty confident that it is for sale and it does have a garage. So it's got a living room. I've been in it. Living room, uh, garage, um, three bedrooms, kitchen, big courtyard, not huge, but a, a decent courtyard inside. And then this house next to it. I think it's been upgraded recently. I can't remember, but quite a nice, it's a very nice part of the neighborhood. It's just empty jungle-like areas that are beautiful and then nice houses sprinkled through. So you're not alone, but you're not packed in either. Uh, and it will over time, but over a very long period of time, start to become more dense. But it, the movement of people into these neighborhoods is slow. It's a trickle uh, simply because of the housing crunch. So if you have, say, $2,000 per month between two people, then, you know, you can have this really beautiful house. You can start to spend money on nice furniture because that's a one-time deal. You can start having, you know, air conditioning and stuff like that. You're starting to see the world a little bit differently. Getting a car, not too big of a deal. Often a car payment is only like three or $400. So that's, you know, that is significant. And a lot of times you'd be like looking at being a one-car family, if that. You may be getting a used car or a smaller car. Maybe you'd still want to be uh, on on public transportation because you can do so much more with your money if you don't spend it on a car. So those are things that you may be considering. But you are able to do things like potentially 
take trips, maybe less to the US, much more likely to go to Europe, for example. Uh, I, I know people who just recently on similar budgets were able to go to Europe, spent a lot of time, you know, a couple weeks uh, in relatively expensive European locations doing relatively expensive activities. That is absolutely within their range. Of course, those are things you have to save up for and plan for, but let's face it, middle-class Americans also have to save up and plan for trips to Europe. Well, you're not just going to do it on a whim on normal middle income incomes, unless maybe you're going to, uh, you know, the cheapest possible places. Well, I'm going to go to Albania. I'm going to go to Serbia. I'm going to go to Montenegro and I'm not going to go fancy. I'm going to be really careful. Yeah, you can generally as a middle-class American pull that off without too much planning, but you're very limited. You're not, even today, you're not going to be heading out to a Portugal or a Spain uh, without at least a little bit of saving up and just being ready for it under normal circumstances. But it's not bad. So that's very similar. But that same Nicaragua middle class family might take trips around the country at the drop of a hat. They might go out to the beach once a week, twice a week. They might uh, go see a show. They might go out to dinner four or five nights of the week. Uh, they might go out drinking and really spend their money out to drinking instead of staying home. A lot of things that Americans would be surprised at being able to do because even a relatively affluent uh, American with a very high, you know, over $100,000 uh, a year income would be very much struggling to do. Now, you have to do the math if you're making uh, a family income 2000 per month, that's 20, 26000 in income here, right, compared to, let's say, 100, 120,000 in the US. Yeah, that sounds like such a ridiculously different number, but you have to remember that the cost of everything is much lower here. Purchasing power parity is n over three times, like it's just over, skims over 300%. So for every dollar that you have as expendable here, uh, you would it'd be the equivalent of having $3 expendable in the US. So once you take the US, you take out your necessary costs, take out your transportation costs, take out your housing costs, take away your taxes, do all that stuff. Remember, tax rates much lower here. So, and many more things are provided. In the US, you pay in almost all circumstances, especially if you're middle class, you have to pay heavily into education. You have to pay heavily for university or whatever. You often have heavy debt loads. Uh, that's just part of being uh, uh, part of being American middle class, the expectation of massive debt loads. You're going to have um, high housing costs, uh, all those things, those add up. Take all those out of that income, and then what's left over it would have to be three times as much as what the Nicaraguan has left over to have the same purchasing power, right? So that's pretty significant. Once you do all that, you're like, oh, once I factor all that in, it's not as far different as you might expect. It does account for the wild differences in how they perceive the different types of income, but it doesn't change uh, the total amount. Now, I want to spin the camera around a little bit because these are some beautiful houses. Two of them are apparently done, and the third one is going up. Someone was just asking on the channel about casitas in the, in the more or less area, not specifically here, not even super close, but these are some beautiful smaller homes that that have just been built. We've been showing them on the channel for a while and uh, the building has definitely been slow. I don't know why they're so slow. So here's one that's just being finished. They're literally working on it right now. And then you can see the two others that are just like it that have been completed. This is such a great spot, beautiful little frontage, two stories. They definitely have a Nicaraguan flair, but at the same time, they also would almost fit in Lebanon, New Jersey, right? Uh, I only mentioned that one because once upon a time, I want to say pushing 20 years ago, is that really possible? No, not quite. It's like 18 years ago, uh, Dominica, my wife and I actually bought a home much like these larger, but not much larger in Lebanon, New Jersey. And uh, at the last minute, our lawyer uh, told us to back out because we were, they said the, the builders were scamming everyone and it was good to get out. And boy, are we glad that we did. But it was a beautiful spot in row houses like that, but much bigger rows uh, in Lebanon, New Jersey. And uh, hard to believe that once upon a time, we were going to have a spot. But back then it was just her and I and, uh, and our little Boston Terrier Oreo, a little bit bigger than Clive that we have now. And uh, we were several years away from even being pregnant with our first kid, Liesl, now. Uh, so it wasn't until Liesl was born that we decided, or until we were pregnant and she was about to be born, that we wanted to move back to our home state uh, and have her be born and be a New Yorker like us. So 
we're in this great neighborhood here. I've shown it a lot, but it always changes and with different lighting, different time of year, whatever. Got great looking houses behind us, got some good fences. This blue house, you can't really see from too many angles, so I'm not gonna like make an effort to show it, but it's a really cool house behind a good wall. No idea I'm pricing out here, don't think it's available, but this is just, it's one of my favorite neighborhoods because of the potential for the future, of course, has these beautiful like just empty lots that are just fenced, it's like wild fields. And uh, the houses that are here, they're all different. So often in everywhere in the world, right? You get the same cookie cutter houses one after another. And here in Los Altos, it is really almost every house is unique. Obviously this row houses that I was just showing, they need to paint the sidewall, uh, are, are three in a row of the same, but otherwise, you know, they're, they're, nothing else in this community is like them at all. And uh, we first discovered this community well, house hunting for Alan three years ago, like a full three years ago. It's pretty crazy. So that gives you a little idea of middle class here. If you're starting to get above uh, 3000 a month for, for a household income, you're probably going to start to experience being upper class or at least extreme upper middle class. Your ability to just spend money and do things starts getting pretty wild and pretty great. That gives you an idea uh, of what it's actually like here and how your money could go here, right? A lot of expats coming in. Of course, some are struggling and are saying they're, you know, they're on really tight budgets and they're looking at Nicaragua because the budgets are so tight, because things are so rough, and that's understood, right? And so some people are really suffering and this is their, this is their chance to find something less expensive. Now, I want to show this beautiful place. I show it every time I walk by. Now, the doors are open. I don't know if that's what's going on, but it's a gated house. It is gorgeous. It's a three bedroom. It's a fully enclosed. This is not colonial in any way. We're not in the city center. We have no colonial guidelines out here, as you can tell if you're paying attention, but you may not think about it. It has a large outside wall. This is perfect for dogs to run. And uh, the last time that I priced this place out, it was $350 per month. I love this house. It's beautiful. It's not huge. It's not, you know, you're not going to get into it and say, I have a mansion now, but you will get into it and, uh, and have a super comfortable three bedroom, beautiful house. It's very functional with an amazing yard. Now, this road has grown over so much. The last time I came down this, it was a wide open road. Now we're in jungle season and it's completely grown over. So I'm just gonna spin the camera around and uh, do a walk and talk from the other direction. All right, this is where we just came from. Winding little pathway. I love this road. And this is that wall. And uh, this is the road in front of us now. It's crazy. I have no idea how this got so grown up, but it's like your own little jungle trail with this one little doggy over here guarding it. He's such a cutie. Such a cutie. Look at that nose. Look at that nose. You're famous. He's only cute because there's a wall, I suppose. He's not, a, he's not a super thrilled that we're here. Now, the last I knew, this place is just an empty wall on the left. I think this is available. A lot of times when I say I think it's available, either I'm basing it on looks, which certainly looks available, um, or that I've seen signs in the past and clearly no one has bought it. This would be a great lot. You could do so much great with this. All of these lots, I know they look super overgrown, uh, but much of the time, if you watch my older videos up here, these are completely clear part of the year. So it's really not a big deal uh, to use them. I know it feels awfully wild, but these are well-maintained roads most of the time. And right now there's no traffic down here. <coughs> Sorry, so there's no reason to maintain them but uh if you're looking for looking for a place i can't i can't believe how many times i have recommended these specific lots that i'm walking past no one ever reaches out to me and is like scott i gotta i gotta look into getting into that lot i could build my dream house there because man these locations if you're looking for that middle middle to upper middle class experience here in nicaragua and you're like a digital nomad or you're retired and uh, you want a place that's going to be affordable and safe, really cool, but you're going to be able to, you know, still integrate into society, be living in a place that's all Nicaraguan, but fancy Nicaraguan with neighbors that are all also, you know, middle and upper middle class, a few sprinkled upper class who just want to not be out in their own housing or whatever and be part of a little community. These are, these are excellent, excellent, excellent places. Now, compared to the U.S., one of the things about the U.S. is that the middle class, traditionally, although it's shrinking heavily, and by the way, this is the same dog that started with us. He's just coming back again. Hi. 
did you miss us? At least I think it is. Uh, makes up the majority of the population. And here in Nicaragua, the working class makes up the majority of the population. The middle class is new and it is rising. It is quickly becoming a powerful thing in Nicaragua. So great communities like this, as you can kind of tell, are relatively new. They're up and coming. So we're constantly seeing new opportunities and new places where people may want to build, to move. Uh, you can tell that even here in Los Altos de Veracruz, sorry, I have something in my shoe and I'm trying to, trying to get it fixed. Even here, there is just a load of opportunities to either buy one of the many houses for sale or get a lot and build a brand new place. If you were to do the same thing in the United States, and here we're coming out into Reparto Veracruz proper, which also beautiful streets and lots of opportunity. I'm always torn as to which I like more. This particular corner, I actually like the outside a little bit better. And all these places have so much potential. Just a little bit of yard work, a little bit of lights. This one has like this jungle frontage. I don't know how much of that's intentional versus just overgrown, but I love it. That would be such a little lights for at night. What a great walkway to your front door. Come home at night in this great little neighborhood. This one, I think, is just, it's a great spot and an older house. Obviously, you'd want to gut it and start over, but you could and do something amazing. And all these streets are just beautiful and quiet. I like that one on the corner stylistically a lot. And right now, okay, so this is actually, this was accidental, um, <laughs> but perfect, perfect timing is this is the street that currently has all the buses sitting on it. And it's turned this really nice street into basically a parking lot. And it's a big negative for this particular street uh, because you can't get down it and there's always these buses sitting there. And it's just not great. But in eight months, we're gonna have that new bus station nearby that's very close to here. It's only like two streets away that we showed on the video the other day. This is a really big pulperia here. So if you live in this particular neighborhood, it's not a grocery store, but anything, snacks, paying your bank bills, recharging your phone, toilet paper, soap, shampoo, uh, drinks, bread, bakery products. I can see fresh baked bakery products brought in from a bakery in there. You can get nearly everything right in a place like that. And then there's these, you know, this is a great, looks like 1960s style, modernish house over there this is another store this is a uh, law office and uh, hardware store and notary and uh, one of these along here is a nursery i think it's in front of us houses on all sides just a great neighborhood great little area so with that new bus station that we showed the other day all these buses are going to disappear and they're going to be based out there and this is going to be a wide open street again and it will be fantastic and such great foliage because the nurseries on the other side of the road behind the buses everyone gets the best plants around here <laughs> so that kind of i hope <laughs> that's how you know i'm wrapping up uh, the episode i always say i hope i hope i gave you the right information i hope that it gives you a scope of what middle class kind of looks like here of course upper class can go as high as you want that's that's the nature of it but as the middle class continues to grow here and become a, a more and more power in Nicaragua, uh, we're going to see new neighborhoods cropping up and uh, new opportunities and a lot of changing. And, uh, and we see it happening every day and so much of it, the call centers, um, so many jobs now that leverage people who speak English particularly and the digital nomad or its equivalent of online work, uh, but working from Nicaragua as Nicaraguans has become such a significant change in what the available career options are is really pushing the middle class to to grow rapidly and to change so it's an exciting time uh but you know so many people are wondering like how much does it cost for this for staff how much does the staff that does this other thing cost this is the other thing they got to fix the entrance to this road the buses have destroyed it this used to be a normal road now it's a mud pit as you come into it the up the, the good part is it keeps people from wanting to drive here but they got to fix that once the buses go so we're just gonna pop around the corner here uh understanding that if you were going to pay someone that, you know, getting to $800 a month really indicates that you're paying someone like they're a working professional, like an entry level, 
uh, you know, office professional, doctor or something of the sort. And, uh, and doctors make more in that range here, right? A doctor you would expect to generally get into middle class, lawyers are gonna get into middle class. Of course, a really good doctor, a really good lawyer especially. Doctors are much more confined because they still have to provide medical care, but lawyers can end up working for bigger and more prominent clients uh, and have much more of a higher bound, potentially, for work. Uh, so they have a little bit more of a, a price range. But accountants and that kind of thing will be in this range, buying houses much like what we showed. That would be exactly the neighborhood we just went through. Doctors, lawyers, accountants, uh, business owners, investors locally. Those are really who we mostly expect to see in that neighborhood. So get down there in the comments, leave your questions, send in your video questions if you would, that'd be fantastic. Look at this beautiful front yard, just a little place back behind, but lots of nice front yard. And uh, boy, if you'd like to help support the channel, you can buy me a coffee, buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. This was not the content I was expecting to do today. The question came up somewhere, it was mostly in my head, and I'm like, oh, no one knows what middle class is here, how to define it, what kind of price ranges it is. So. I just decided we should dig into it. So here we are digging into it. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe, do all this stuff. And I will see all of you tomorrow. And I will do my best to pop up some videos on the screen. Just click on one of them and help support the channel by telling YouTube to send the algorithm our way.